Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He's an Olympic champion. He's a world champion. He's a European champion. His his accolades can go on and on. Uh, but today, we've got Florent Manadou of France. Good, I'm good. Like uh, I started uh, the new the new season now in Marseille, so I'm I'm pretty good. There is some sun here, so I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. started the new season like you said um I, I know we just reported recently in the last week or two um you're training in in your home in france full time now um yeah. while you were training at energy standard before i know you, you had some back and forth there can you can you tell me a little bit about that and what that means for for this season for you moving forward um first of all first of all sorry uh I think I I did a, a good job with James uh, because I needed to to move a bit uh, out of France to restart my uh, my uh, my career in uh, in Gloria in Istanbul in, uh, in Antalya. Sorry, and um, after a while, uh, I just felt that I needed to move back here because I missed some some stuff like uh, my friends, my family, like my uh, my apartment, some stuff like this. And um, after all the lockdown, after um, all the ISL stuff like this, I I just needed to to come back to have uh, a base uh, because at that moment it's difficult to travel with the with the COVID nineteen. Uh, it's also difficult the relationship between Turkey and France at the moment. So it was a bit difficult uh, to take this decision. Uh, this decision, but. You know, James understood. Uh, he told me that uh, it was the, the best de- decision I could uh, I could take at the moment, and I'm happy to work with uh, with Julian Jackie uh, one more time because I worked with him uh, for six months, one year in 2014, and I did my best in a hundred for a short course as well with him. So I'm pretty excited to see the result. Yeah, I I talked with James uh, I think during the ISL. And he mentioned that, um, you know, even when you were training with Energy Standard, you were someone who who wanted that home time and who would go home, you know, regularly yeah. during stints just just to be home. Um, what what do you like so much about you know your home in France, and and why is that such a big priority for you? The big difference, I think, is that when I do something, I put everything I, I have in in it so if i'm in gloria i'm i'm fully in my swimming like process swimming world and uh you cannot really get out because you're always with the team you eat with the team you sleep in the um, in the hotel so mm. it it was a bit like uh difficult sometimes after two or three weeks because it was too much for me uh, i'm 30 years old and it's difficult to just be as a, a kid in, uh, in training camp, you know, just going to the pool, uh, eat uh, at the buffet, stuff like this. And I just need to, to come back to create my personal life as well. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just love Marseille and I think it's a good balance for me because I need to get out of the, of the pool sometimes. And in Marseille, when I, when I end uh, the, the training, let's say at five or 6 PM, I just can come back at home and, see my friends and to talk about something else and swimming and uh, playing some darts, uh, playing some uh, other games or see my family. And it's very important for me to be filled up by, by this kind of stuff to be more excited after for the next training. I think it's, I'm pretty much like this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned your family, obviously your sister, Laura Manadou is a great swimmer herself, an Olympic champion as well. Do you guys talk swimming a lot, or when you see her now, do you guys not talk about swimming ever? <laughs> uh, not a lot, to be honest. I talk more with my uh, with my older brother, who was mm-hmm. my coach uh, a long time ago. He coached me, uh, I think, six or seven years. And after I moved to Marseille in 2011, so I was I was young, but he's the one in Marseille. My my sister is in Bordeaux, like in the 
on the West Coast. So I, I don't really see, see her really often. But when I see her, of course, we talk a bit of swimming, but not that much. And uh, I think it's important to not talk only about swimming with siblings or parents. You know, it's important to have something else to talk about as well. Uh, I agreed. I mean, having that balance, especially as you mentioned, getting, getting older and, and finding other interests, you know, in the world, um, seems, seems like a really important thing. Uh, I, I didn't know that though. Your, your, your brother was your coach for a long time. Um, how did, can you tell me a little bit more about that? How did that come about? Um, it was, I think, the, in 2005, I think, uh, I just decided to stop swimming because now when I look back, I think it's also because of my sister because she became Olympic champion in 2004 and there were too much, uh, too much look on me. You know, in 2005, it was like the the brother of Laurent Nadeau. It was a bit difficult in France. Like all my coaches wanted me to swim the 400 free or 200. I am just like her, but I'm not the same. You can, you can see it. And uh, then I stopped for a while for six months, eight months. And my brother, who who just started uh, his uh, like uh, coaching license. I don't know if I can say that, but like he just became a coach. He was 18 or 19 years, uh, years old. And he just told me, okay, we can just start to see. I just want to work. I know you're good. And we can just talk about what you want. And we can create something different. And I decided to come back. Um, and I trained with him until uh, March 2011. And I just did the cut of the 50 fly for the, for the world in Shanghai. It, it was uh, 2366. And I did exactly that time. So it was it was a good story. Uh, after that, it was a bit difficult for him because I just moved to Marseille. It was a bit, he was a bit angry, but um, yeah, it's all it started. And I have to thank him too because without him, I, I probably wouldn't be here now. So it's a lot of a lot of stuff happened in my in my career, like, and now I'm I'm here like uh, at that level. I just came back, but. A lot of person just inspire me or help me to to reach this this level. Yeah, I mean that's. I I think siblings understand you in a way that few people do. I know I certainly have an older brother as well, and you know we're really close. And that's really cool that he he gave you the opportunity, especially um, under that kind of pressure of you know your your sister being an Olympic champion to say, hey, we can we can do what you want, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, it was just a bit difficult sometimes because if we had uh, an argue in the in the training, like it was difficult to see him as a brother after that. So for six or seven years, he was my coach and not really my brother. He was still my brother, but I didn't really see him as a brother uh, at that time. And uh, it was a bit difficult at that point sometimes. Uh, but, you know, when your brother is like your coach or your dad is your coach, something like this, just with a look after a race or he can understand you very well. And uh, I think this is a, this is a big thing. Uh, it was a bit difficult in the side and very good in the other side. So it was a good balance, I think. Yeah. And then I jumping ahead a little bit, I know – like you said, you just came back to the sport uh, in 2019, I think it was. Um, you know, you had taken an extended break. You, you, yeah. You'd played handball for a while. <clears throat> um, so you, you, it, this wasn't your first time stepping away, away from the sport. Um, you know, every, every time you take some time like that out of the pool, um, what do you come back with or, or what do you learn from, from being out of the pool like that? I think I needed to to stop at, after 2016 because in France and yeah, mostly in France or in Europe, when you win something after you became a superhero and a superhero cannot lose. And if you lose after that, it's difficult. It's difficult with the journalist or 
stuff like this. So um, I just decided to stop because it was just too much for me. And I was in a, in a good shape. I just became second after Anthony Irvine in uh, 2016, which was good because when I look back now, uh, getting uh, one, one silver in two weeks, it's, it's good. Like, of course, I wanted to win in 2016, but but it was a, I was a bit disappointed, so I stopped for that, and I was like, okay, I will just do what I want uh, because I have to make my own decision. When you swim or when you do probably another sport, you're just like you have coaches, you have parents, you have you have uh, friends, and it's just a season after a season, and you don't really think about if you like the sport or if you really enjoy it or if you want to do this and this and this. You're just following the process. When you are a kid, it's good because you're playing. It's like a game. And after, I just had the feeling, yes, I was good. So I just continue, continue. And I just reached a high level. I became Olympic champion. So after after that, I just continued for for some years. And in 16, I was like, I'm not really enjoying that. Maybe I can just stop and maybe do something else. Uh, I really like to do other stuff. You know, I just bought a telescope to do to try it. I just play guitar. Um, I love to discover a lot of stuff. I'm really curious. Uh, so with the handball, I play handball when I was a kid. So I wanted to try uh, try again. And it was amazing if, these three years because I just decided what I wanted to do for my life. And after that, I was like, okay, maybe uh, I can come back because it's my decision and I can talk with a uh, with the strength coach, I can talk with the coach, I can talk with the mental coach about what I want to do, what I need to do to to reach the level I want to, to have. And it was just amazing to be part of the of this process and not just, okay, I do it because I did it last year, so I, I will do exactly the same thing and I'll try to, to swim faster. Now I'm like, I choose to go to the pool. Uh, I'm happy to go. I'm enjoying uh, I'm not as fast as before so far. I hope I will be faster, but uh, but let's see. But I'm enjoying the process, and for me, it's it's really important because to be Olympic champion, world champion is good. But if I look back now, I'm 30 years old, and what I remember from these last 10 years is it's training camps with friends. Uh, enjoying the some competition but it's not just the result to be olympic champion or world champion it's, it's also like create relationship with coaches with friends have new friends or everything out of the competition was incredible and it's what made me now as a human being it's not just because i'm olympic champion that i continue it's because i love everything who is who was uh, next to the pool too so I just decided to come by because I wanted to enjoy the process and uh, if I can have the result as well, I want to say, I want to sign this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good reason to come back. And it, it seems like so far, you know, yeah. like you said, you haven't, haven't, haven't hit best times, but again, the process, it, it seems, that seems like what's important. Um, what, what have you enjoyed about you know chasing that process uh so far specifically in these last couple of years i think i love to be uh the hunter i i just love until 2012 2013 and i was the best in the 53 because i became olympic champion and i i did some good times i did 21 three every year basically so i was the one to beat uh, and this this position is a bit difficult i think <clears throat> when you have someone to uh to uh focus on or uh, if you're not the best it's i think easier to be to be focused on the training and to to train hard this is my feeling at least for me and uh, I don't know. I just I just love to to think about. Okay, I will try to beat this guy uh, in freestyle. I'll try to beat this guy in fly or in breaststroke or backstroke. It's like I'm happy to do it now, and I'm happy to 
try to think and create some new drills or new stuff to to be fast in the pool like i'm not the best now so i just have to enjoy it and to train hard to try to become a better swimmer uh, has your training changed a lot from, let's say, like, you know, the, the year of 2016 leading into the Olympics and then when you came back, you know, you said you talked to some some coaches and kind of made a plan of what you wanted to do. Was that a pretty big shift from what you were doing before? With James, it was more uh, basics speed and speed endurance which i love uh it was good also because i was in a group with uh, a lot of good swimmers and basically every training were a challenge <laughs> <laughs> like it was it was a bit difficult sometimes uh, because you can be a bit down uh, because of the of the um, the week you did before and but you have to win this is this is a bit difficult to manage when you are in a good group but this is the way to perform too. And uh, now I think with Julian, I will just swim a bit more. Uh, now I'm happy because I have three months, four months to recreate a lot of aerobic and uh, hard stuff. Because with Jens, we didn't have the time to really, to really have a big period of work uh, where I'm very tired because... I just started after I had uh, the first competition 10 weeks after in Rome, after I took a break uh, mm -hmm. because all the, the swimmers were in the, the world in Guangzhou. And after it was ISL, uh, European Championship. So I couldn't really have a two or three months very hard. And after it was a lockdown because of the COVID-19. So it was, it was a bit different. We did a lot of sprint, a lot of speed endurance, but I need to struggle in the training, I need to be tired. Uh, I think this is my feeling, but also uh, I don't want to do extra stuff for nothing. You know, when you're young, you can you can do some uh, extra work, but now when you're 30 years old, you have to recover too. And it's uh, the most difficult part because when you're 20, 25, it's easier to be honest. And now I'm, I, I have to be more focused on the, uh, recovery boots or uh, massage or, or um, food and stuff like this. Uh, like I wasn't good at all before and now I have to make an effort, but I appreciate it to be a bit better on that, uh, on that point, on a recovery point. Yeah. Uh, s s speaking of recovery, you know, I, I'd I want to talk about this ISL season um, because I think it was so interesting. You know, the six week bubble was kind of unlike anything else that, we've that sports fans have seen before um so tell me about how going into it how did how were you guys preparing for these back-to-back -back races you know it it certainly in the water and also outside the water in terms of recovering from them uh, we had uh, i think six or seven weeks to prepare uh the 2020 isl season it's not that much, uh, especially if you have to perform for six weeks. So we just decided to to do six weeks, but like kind of a, a short preparation, you know. And um, I knew that I could reach a good level, but not the best level of my life because I had to swim fast for six weeks. And comparing to, to uh, some swimmers uh, like uh, Kliman Kolesnikov or Caleb Dressel, they just... They came uh, retired, I think, and after they just jump and jump and jump every every competition. Like I was, I was different. I think I just swam the same time in uh, in all my uh, races in the fifty and the hundred. I'm happy about that, but of course, when you see the the other just swimming faster and faster, it's a bit difficult. And six weeks was good in terms of. All the world was shut down, and it was difficult to uh, for all the the other sportsmen to to do their job or to enjoy uh, the passion, you know. So for us, it was good, but in the other side, it was a bit difficult because it was in November. It was a bit cold. Uh, we were not allowed to go out in Budapest, 
so we had to stay in the room and for me uh, for my personality i just need to move a bit to to be uh, how, how can i say that uh, stimulated by stimulated by something else you know to to perform so i i did my best i recover a lot i had some massage which which was good but I think uh, I didn't have enough sun, for example. I just understand now that when we are going to training camp uh, an outside pool, it's much better because you're also taking some sun and D-vitamin. And I miss that a lot in Budapest. I miss that a lot. I try to uh, just go out sometimes, but we were allowed to go only one hour outside uh, every day. So it wasn't that much. And in November in Budapest, it's not sunny, sunny. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it was difficult. The sun goes out. Uh, yeah, the, the sun went down, I think, at 3 or 4 p.m. So it was a bit difficult to have the, the competition at 8, you know, because it's night, it's night uh, since two or three hours already. So on that point, it was difficult, but I appreciate that we could make it because all the rest of the world were just shut down and we just did a competition and... For a lot of swimming fun, it was uh, it was I think cool to uh, to watch it. I can confirm that it was cool as a swimming fan. That it was it was great uh, having you know six six weeks of just straight competition. Um, I mean that seems you know so so your plan going in was you had this six or seven week prep and then you were going to go mm-hmm. fast for six for weeks. Six, and... Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a bit like a. It's not, it's, it's not really good, but I, I, I did my best. And uh, in Europe, I think it was more difficult than uh, in the US to train during the lockdown. So you, you could really see the difference between some people who couldn't train, uh, like uh, Katin Gaussu, I think, uh, Vlad Morozov. People like this didn't really swim, uh, swim fast because they didn't prepare for it because they didn't have a pool maybe uh, to train during the lockdown. And some other swimmers just uh, swam normally for the um, for the lockdown, and they were a bit better. So it was it was a strange re- uh, year, but it was good to do it. To be honest, absolutely. And and again, uh, what what do you feel like you got? You know, take what what did you take away from that six weeks um, heading into you know this period now? I understood that. I have to be better at uh, between like competition. Uh, I think I didn't swim enough between two competition, and I if I, I I I'm I observe a lot of stuff, and during competition I can see that I'm not the one who is recover uh, a lot. Uh, I don't really swim cool down a lot compared to other swimmers. I try my best. I did like extra. Uh, comparing to before, but I think I have to do a bit more uh, because if you're not swimming, uh, if you're not training, and if you're arriving uh, the, the first week, the first competition, ready to perform, you cannot hold six weeks of competition like this. So it was the first time, so it's it was difficult to, to do, I think, for me. Uh, but it's good. It's good, like... Uh, I can look back and see what I did wrong, and uh, I hope it's going to be different uh, next time. I, I hope I can just like, as uh, as other swimmer, just swim fast and faster in the competition. Let's see. Yeah, I mean it seems like a good goal. Uh, <laughs> um, getting away from swimming a little bit, I know you said you were curious. You like constant stimulation. Um, I mean, now that you're home, you mentioned you have a guitar, you have a telescope. Um, I mean, do you have any other interests that you are pursuing pretty heavily outside of swimming right now? Uh, I think after swimming, I will maybe try to have fun. I can say, yeah, I, I, I'll try to have fun in the in cinema. I love to... I try many times uh, to uh, to be an actor on TV show, small things, eh? but I enjoyed it. And uh, it's more about curiosity. I was curious and I was happy to do something different, I think. 
So yes, uh, maybe this, but after swimming. At the moment and during the lockdown, I played some darts <laughs> too <laughs> with my friends. And uh, and my telescope is over there. You can see I have a piano, oh, wow. piano too. Nice. Yeah. And um, no, I just, I'm, I'm really into something for one month, two months, three months. And after I moved to something else. Mm -hmm. So I played guitar a lot uh, between 2015 and 2018, I think. I don't really play at the moment. I want to do something else. But to be honest, uh, now it's uh, January. I'm retired because of the of the beginning of the season. I have to find the balance between my home, the, the new training session, the gym. So I think January is um, it's difficult to do something else. But let's see. Let's see uh, after one if I uh, if I'm less tired because you know this period it's. Uh, it's difficult for the body, I think, especially when you are 30 years old and you just came back. So let's see after that. That makes total sense. Uh, so the lockdown, you know, as you mentioned, it was harder to train uh, for some in Europe. Um, what was your situation like? I mean, I know it started mid-March in the United States here. Um, I mean, were mm -hmm. you out of the pool for a significant period? Yeah. Uh, I was out of the pool for almost three months. I just did some uh, some session on my uh, on my terrace, I like push ups or uh, abs. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's difficult to be honest. It was it was it was okay until uh, until they decided to postpone the Olympic Games uh, because we just understood we had some time and I just took this time to relax to think about what I want to do, to think about um, out of, uh, to be out of the swimming for a while was was good too. And I, I don't know, I, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, I know I'm lucky because I have a, a good view on the, on the sea and I have a, a big terrace too. And it wasn't wasn't the case for, for all the sportsmen. So. So I was happy to do it, and I did it with uh, with Penile Bloomer. So <laughs> I was I was happy about that too, and uh, we enjoyed it a lot. And after that, uh, we just moved a bit in uh, in Corsica, and uh, after we just uh, train. I think yeah, we train a bit in uh, in July with uh, with James in um, <clears throat> in Antalya. So it was a strange year, and I'm happy to have more uh, comfort and. Uh, yeah, uh, to stay here, not travel a lot because I need it, I think. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, like you said, not a great situation, not an ideal situation, but it sounds like you made the most of it, which is nice. So he heading into your, you know, your block of training now, um, you know, it's the Olympic year, 2021. Um, what do you do? You have certain focuses in practice. Do you have certain things you're working on in your races when you think about, you know, the, the competing in a fifty freestyle? Do you have do you have things specific things you're working on in practice right now? Um, at the moment and until March, I just want to swim a lot. For me, swim a lot, not. <laughs> It's not that much for for uh, anyone, but uh, for feel that I'm a swimmer. Since I came back, uh, I just have the feeling I'm a sprinter. I have a lot of strength. I have a lot of speed, but I cannot really carry my speed until the end of the 50. And I think I have to be more focused on that, and I have to trust myself that. I can hold on the force. I'm, I'm not that bad in a hundred. I, I did some good time in a hundred. Um, in ISL too, I think I'm more, I'm more happy about my hundreds than my, uh, than my fifty, to be honest. And I have to trust myself. Um, <clears throat> and yes, I think I over swim a lot. I know this is, this is a bit. Uh, 
normal in short course too because it's it's very fast you're doing like a nine ten strokes and after you have the turn and then you have you know everything is going fast 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 but in long course it's it's different you have to to hold a bit uh your stroke and uh, uh yeah i i just need to trust myself this is my uh this is my uh, my thing now. I have to be focused on. Do, are do you like? Do you prefer short course or long course? <laughs> I ask myself this question many times. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I think short course because you can. You can enjoy it and I can swim backstroke, I can swim breaststroke, 100 medley. In long course, I can swim maybe 50 free, 50 fly, 100 free. But uh, that's it, you know, I'm I'm a powerful swimmer and short course helped me a lot. So I would say short course. <laughs> gotcha. Um, well, Florent, I want to be respectful of your time. I, I appreciate you coming on and chatting with me a bit. Any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Uh, just like uh, enjoy every uh, everything in life and the process is also good to enjoy sometimes it's not just uh, the result I think it's my thought at the moment you've been listening to the swim swim podcast stay tuned for new episodes every week you can take swim swim podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.